Hey folks, thanks for joining the Photographer's Podcast. Before we get going, I want to bring awareness to a terrific organization that looks after our young girls. It's called Girls Inc. and they're all across North America. I have Shauna here with me today to talk all about what you do. Thank you so much. So Girls Inc. is a registered charity that provides programming to girls 6 to 18 years old. All of our programs are designed to build confidence in every area of a girl's life and give her the tools to grow up healthy, educated and independent. Yeah, it's very important to look after our girls today, especially with COVID out there. I'm sure they're isolated and maybe more susceptible to issues. Absolutely. So during COVID, of course, as we know, everybody is living their lives online. Girls in particular are very susceptible to, um, you know, they're seeing feeds all day of highly sexualized, retouched images of girls. And they're also, there's an alarming number of predators that are out there online right now that are taking advantage of the yeah. fact that girls are online. Well, I congratulate you on everything you've done. Thank you. Guys, and girls, grab your cup of coffee, enjoy the rest of the podcast, but please help out any organization that helps our young children out whenever you can. Thanks. Thank you. Welcome to the Photographer's Podcast. Today we have a real treat as our guest Julie Bracca will be demonstrating her workflow to get her high-end black and white photos. Welcome to the show, Julie. Hi, Randy. Thanks for having me here. Oh, well, we're really lucky to have you. I mean, uh, your photography is uh, outstanding and our guests are really going to enjoy looking at it. Oh, um, I uh, was reading your bio on your website and I see that you started in interior design and I'm going to really I'm going to bet that that's where you really got this feel for architectural photography. Why don't you just tell us your journey from doing the interior design to actually becoming an, a really, really great architectural photographer. Um, okay. Andy. So I, I did study interior design uh, in schooling. And the one thing I learned uh, in that program was really paying a lot of attention to lines, flow, the flowing of the lines, the movements in the architecture. So when I started in photography and started going down into the city and uh, shooting either the architecture or just doing some street photography, that was the one thing I, it, that kind of came back to me was watching the movement of the lines in the buildings and seeing how they all kind of come together with, with either with the shapes, the shadows, the textures of the buildings. Um, so then while I'm down there and I'm looking at them, I do right away in my mind visualize what they would look like in black and white and exactly how I would play with the tones in black and white to get to what I want to achieve with those images. And it's true, black and white really gets us uh, a lot more detail and it can remove all the distractions, but uh, you're probably walking around, you turn the color part of your brain off and just went right to black and white, right? I, I am. And I think it's just because I, I uh, did so much black and white that it now becomes secondhand to me um, when I'm shooting, in, 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 depending on the scenario. Right away, if I see something, I'm like, oh, this will look great in black and white. Yeah. So I think we're going to see a really good example of that in a second. I'm going to bring up one of your, uh, you, your shot of U of T Convocation Hall here. So okay. let me just bring that up. Tell me if you can see that. Here it is. All right. So what I love about this capture is, and, and there's a lot to love, is the, the contrast really gives you some depth and almost a 3D effect. So tell me how you came to create this masterpiece. This was what actually, when I, kind of the beginning, when I started shooting architecture, started really with, with this image, um, or that day of uh, shooting. And... Um, when I first saw it, you know, it was just, you know, everything was great that day. The lighting, the clouds, everything was just perfect. It was a weekend, so there wasn't really anybody around. Um, so when I started playing with this in, in black and white, I really tried to emphasize a lot with the different tones, the 50, you know, the different shades of the grays and the blacks in this image. Um, I played with each column separately uh, by selecting them and changing the tone with them, um, darkening the sky, trying to, I just, 
I had a lot of fun with this image because there was just so much movement in, in the columns and the curvature of this building. The bricks had so much texture. So you could really play with the grunge, um, you know, adding so much texture to the brick part uh, in this building. But it, it, uh, it was way, this is what started it. What, what about the clouds? Were they original or did you add them in after? I added a bit more uh, texture and really darkened the clouds. So it, it was an actual bright day, but I kept darkening and darkening the sky until I got this. Um, it was so long ago when I did this, so it was, uh, it, uh, it's hard to remember every little thing I did, but mm -hmm. I did play a lot with that sky to make it as dark as it, as it is. Well, and it really almost looks like a Roman theater somewhere where gladiators would, yeah. uh, you know, I really, really love that about that. Okay, uh, I'm going to pull up another photo here called okay. Side by Side, so I'm just going to stop sharing this one, yeah. and let me just bring up the next one here. Oh, by your side, yes. By your side, is that showing right now? Uh, not yet. Not yet, eh? Okay, one second. How's that? Perfect. Okay, so, so, so honestly, um, <clears throat> when I look at this and if I really, really think about it, it's a little emotional and, and I think that means that you achieved exactly what you wanted to achieve yeah. with this shot. So again, where did the idea come from? What made you uh, do this and who are the the actors involved? Oh, okay, so um, back in the Google Plus days, um, I was I joined a scavenger hunt group and they would give you a list of words and you had, I can't remember how, what the time frame it was, to come up with a shot for each that would represent each word. Um, so for this was the second round that I participated and it was in the fall, so they had a lot of Halloween item so which was one and ghost was another so i was trying to come up with an idea of what to do for ghost my husband came up with this idea hmm. so that's my husband on the table um and that's my daughter um so again back when i shot this i think this was back in 2014 my photoshop skills were not very uh, great at the time um, i was still kind of learning so i didn't even think about putting her in photoshop and making her a ghost so the only way I was able to think about achieving this was long exposure. So I turned off all the lights and the only thing that was lit is that candle that you see there in the photograph. And I just did a 15 second long exposure. I had my dog, so my husband had to stay really still mm -hmm. and my daughter was standing beside me. And I would count to five, motion for her to go in. She would stand there, I would count for five and then I would get her to leave. I probably, we probably had to do this maybe about 30, 40, I, I can't even begin to tell you how many times we did it until I got something that I really liked. Uh, this was the second round. We did it one night. I didn't like the outfit she had on. She had on this sweater. It just, it was too much texture and um, it, it interfered too much with the image. So then I had her change into something more simple like that summer dress. And, and then we just kept trying it over and over again until I got something that resembled her ghostly image. Um, so you could tell that, you know, even in her, in her hand on his shoulder, uh, that part kind of, I guess the exposure caught her a bit longer with her hand there as she was walking away and, and left. But you uh, see, how, see how cool that is actually. So, and sometimes our best work is from something we didn't plan. I yeah. think it's brilliant that her hand is more in reality and she fades away to the ghostly, um, image and product, right? Like, I, I really love that. So, and I really wanted something that would be heart wrenching. Like, I, we, I, so th that was the mood I was going for. So, having her picture on the table, the yes. little candle lighting from on there, having him like passed out after drinking a bottle of vodka, it, and then I made him really rough and really went hard on the contrast to give that grunge feel that he was just beaten just, you know, in sorrow and she's there, you know, standing behind him, you know, being there by his side. And um, I ended up placing first in the scavenger hut for the ghost image. So I was really excited about that. I, I could see that. I mean, yeah, it just, look, well, look at, just look at the reflection on the table too of his hand. I think that's yeah. really brilliant. I mean, if you had to do this again, would you create a layer with her and make the opacity a little, you play with that or would you, how would you do this 
again? Probably, yeah, maybe going about it now, I may have tried it more that way, but I don't know if I would have gotten the same effect, to be yeah, honest maybe with you. It, it blended so well, ghostly, with the background mm -hmm. um, on this image. And, and I did submit it to the, um, the competition with the greater, at the time it was the GT Triple C, the Greater Toronto right. Club, whatever it was. Yeah. And it came in, I, I got honorable mention. So as you, you probably know, that competition is quite hard because uh, there's so many images that are submitted, but she did come in, uh, you know, this one came in arm, as an honorable mention. And so I was still proud of that percent. That's a top yeah. 3%. And yeah. I, honestly, the, uh, GT Triple C, which is now the O3C, has I think 40 member clubs. So it's only going to get harder here. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. Right. So, um, so that was it was kind of proud. So this image sure. and then the the UFT one that came in third. So that was just astonishing that that UFT one came in third. But uh, yeah, it is a very hard competition because the number of yeah. photos that get submitted. Well, but, well. Yeah. Uh, now that we're in COVID too, so there's something else that comes to mind with this photo is that. Um, doing projects with people within your house, you know, that's kind of what we have to do. We, we, we make photos with what we have yeah. and you've done a great job of employing your, I mean, your husband is great here. Okay. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I use my family quite a bit. Uh, mostly my daughter. She, she loves to be in front of the camera. Uh, my husband's has sat there a couple of times. I, I can't get my son. My son's been the hard one uh, wow. to, to work with me, but well, uh, then, I then, use my pets if I have to. So just just tie in, tie up your son and then make something out of that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so um, one of the things I'm really looking forward to is to showing our audience how to uh, how you go through your workflow. So um, there was one picture that I think you wanted to work on. It was uh, the Marilyn Monroe uh, Towers in Mississauga. Yes. So if you want to take control of the screen and okay. just walk us through how you end up with your end product on that, that would be terrific. Okay. All okay. Right. Sure. All okay, right. Go ahead. All right. So when I, when I went to um, Sasaga to shoot these two towers, um, I, the, the, I love the way these towers stand. Like they're very curvy. Uh, they have, you know, these balcony lines that kind of curve all around it. Uh, I kept walking around the buildings um, trying to get the perfect abstract um, shot of them together. And I think when I was, there was the one street, and I'm not sure if it was the main street when you're going down there uh, on here, Ontario. Um, I think it's here, Ontario. I'm not, uh, I can't remember. I think so. Yeah, yeah I think, I think right? so. Right. Yeah. Um, this is the, the, this is the view shot that I would constantly see. So I kept walking around just trying to get that perfect shot of the angle. In the time of day I was there, it was the sun was starting to set. So this is where you're seeing the reflection over here of the sun setting. Oops. Um, over here. So when I envisioned this in black and white, like this was the final result and what I was trying to achieve. Again, trying to give it more of an abstract feel. Uh, the, second building kind of creeping up from behind and the sky completely blacked out. Uh, so the way I, um, when I start working on, on this, so I right away, I bring it into Lightroom. So I'm just going to do that. I'm uh, not Lightroom, sorry, Photoshop from Lightroom. Selection, so I don't have to waste time doing that for this review, but you would basically um, select the sky over here. I'm just going to actually, this little part here, just going to fix that like that. And then to darken the sky, I'm gonna go and do a, an adjustment layer. And just use, you can use either curves or levels, anything that would basically help darken that part of the sky. About like that. You don't wanna black it out, but just darken it enough that way. Now there's contrast between the balconies and the sky. Okay, and so that's gonna help you when you turn this into a black and white image by making it blacker? Exactly. And this way, I'm not going to lose any of the back of the building into right. the sky. Right. Okay. So I'm going to flatten the layer now like that. And I'm going to create a smart object <clears throat> before I go and use the Nick filter. So I like doing all my black and white edits using Nick Silver Effects Pro. Yeah. Uh, it's okay. been my go-to since, uh, since the beginning. And um, I, I still... Uh, use it to today. I just find it's a nice strong um, uh, tool, filter tool, plugin with um, with Photoshop or Lightroom. Right. So yeah. here's my 
So here's my Silver Effects Pro. You get this little menu with the NIC. Yeah, I like all the NIC plugins. I like um, Color Effects is one of my favorite. Yes, I use that all the time as well. So, um, and those are the two that I normally use. I know there's other software out there. I haven't really explored any of the other ones. Um, I've had Nick from the beginning, so I've just kind of stuck with what I know how well, to use. I mean, how much time do you have in the day? <laughs> it, it, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so this, this is now just basic black and white. You can, you know, the software comes with all these different presets that you can use. Um, you can actually, you create your own, uh, which I've already started doing. Um, but this is, let's start with the basics and then I'll show you how I get to the uh, black and white um, architect. So over here in the panel on the side, you have all the different features that you can use. Um, I, I usually wait and save structure to the end. So we're going to start with the contrast. So I usually start from the bottom and I work my way up. Um, I start with a soft contrast. If you bring it towards the one end, it really whitens out the picture, so I don't like the way that looks. So I'm going to try and go to the other side, and it's already, you can really start seeing that it's darkening up the sky uh, quite nicely there. Yeah, yeah. Now, I just got to fix a bit of the highlight. So this white highlight here was the sunset reflecting off of the, the building. So we're going to work on the highlights there in a minute, but maybe just bring down the soft contrast just a bit. Um, the blacks, I like amplifying the blacks as it just kind of makes the darks pop out a bit more. So we're going to amplify a bit of the blacks along the buildings. And basically my goal here is to make it a very abstract feeling. Right, um, like, like art. Exactly, right? right. So this picture here, it's not a typical um, architectural building uh, that you normally see. So I, I shot this with the intent of making it more abstract with this little with this other building kind of popping up from behind. So I'm going to maybe bring down some of the brightness so we can try to help bring down the highlighted tones that are there because it's you don't want to um, you don't want the highlights to be blown out. Uh, Correct. Yeah. This brightness um, sliders, they almost act like levels in Photoshop. So it really helps you play with the shadows either make things darker or make things brighter. So for this picture, I, I'm going to try and bring the shadows down just a bit because again, I'm going for more of an abstract uh, frame um, more than anything. So I'm going to bring down the midtones and you can really start seeing the pictures coming together. Um, and now I'm going to bring down the highlights because I don't like all the highlights that are down here and in the center here. So right. I'm bring down the highlights just a bit. Okay. So you already see the sky starting to shape up um, and I'm not losing that much of the yeah, second building. That's the important part, the fine tuning is you don't want to lose those balconies because they add so much to the photo. It, exactly. You can also play with the sensitivity here. Um, I sometimes will play with that. So if I want the sky to be a bit darker, you can, you know, start bring blues playing. down. Yeah. Yeah. You can bring them down just a bit. Um, maybe bring down the yellows that might help a bit with the white, the highlights there. So you can, you can actually play with just the sensitivity of the colors. So I'll sometimes will play with that for a bit and see if that might help. Um, the other feature I like using is the toning part. So you can actually, you know, pick different colors of black and white. If you want to do split tones, um, I'll use like this one here, number four, sometimes, especially for colder days, if you want to add a bit more of the blue into the photo right. and make it colder. So you can actually, um, also um, reduce the strength of the toning and just kind of bring it down. Oh, so not just toning, but the strength of it. Yeah, okay. Exactly. So you can actually manipulate how much of that toning do you want in the photo. So you can kind of see if you want it, you know, you can right. really play with the adjustment. So if you don't like it at 22, you can bring it down. So then I start looking at the vignetting. Um, the one feature I like about here is the lens fall off because I find it works kind of like a gradient all the way around opposed to like an oval okay. shape um, vignetting. So you can right, right away see that the, you know, number one, is, I usually go with one or two because I find three is really strong. So yeah. two and one, you can start playing with it. So I think number one is pretty good because you're not losing too much of the, of the dark tone of the tones. 
So I'm already getting the picture almost the way I like it. So I'm not losing too much detail. I'm still, I may still want to work in this section, but I can do this back in once I'm in Photoshop. And then if there was ever anything in the photos that you um, want to fine tune, so I could hit the little control panel here if I really wanted to, stick a little circle radius here, kind of like in Lightroom, but you have this okay. control thing. Yeah. And you can bring down the brightness if you want in that one area. Or if I find this area is too bright, I can put another control point here, bring that up a bit, and then maybe bring down the, the brightness a bit there if I wanted to. Well, so you, you can really play with that. And it's really nice because it's really the same as any of the other control point tools you have in Lightroom or something like that. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So I think I'm going to leave it at that and I'm going to hit OK. And then let's see what we get uh, in Photoshop. So then I go back into Photoshop um, and then I can always fine tune the photo even more. Now, the reason why I did this as a, um, a, a, a what do you call it? Um, An abstract? I, no, the uh, filter, smart object filter. Yeah. Sorry, I kind of lost the word there. <laughs> I can always go back into the software. Uh, if I want to fine tune it a bit more and it will, it will bring me back to where I left off and I can remember where I, what I did. Um, I never used to do that in the past and I've learned over the years that uh, this really comes in handy. Well, yeah, there's a lot of times where I kind there. of wonder what I've done. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it's, everything's all there. So if I want to still make a bit more changes, I can, um, you know, maybe bring this down a bit so it affects more of the corner and then hit, you know, okay, let's say, and then it will save it where I left it off. Okay, so now I could have gone and did the structure and added detail from here. Um, that's an option. The other option is doing a high pass as well to okay. make the balcony stand out a bit more. But I think I still want to maybe tone down this section of the photo down here because I'm not quite happy with the, the tonality down here. So I can just do another little adjustment layer, do a little curve, bring down just a bit more, then invert it and then brush in where I want the effect to take place. So if I just want to kind of just maybe tone down just a bit there, okay. I can, if I want to maybe just tone down a little bit at the top so that way your eye doesn't go up here too much, you can. And, and, the and key I'm just here is to invert it, right? That's the real important part. Right, invert it and then mask in. Uh, some people do like those luminosity masks. I usually just play with the curves and the levels and I will paint in where I want the effects to take place. Yeah, yeah. a little more uh, control. Yeah, a little bit more control. Um, but the luminosity masks, obviously, like, they work as well if you know what, how, to, how to use them. And, so then yeah. at this point, I, I'll do the high pass um, filter. So you just to make sharpen it, it right? Yeah, to sharpen it, so. I, I subscribed to Flurn and it gave me a, a bunch of already preset actions that you can do the high pass uh, filters. So I'll just do the action, but it's usually you do a flat um, uh, stamp of the image and then you blend it to um, overlay or you can use soft light or hard light and then you use the high pass filter and you, you, you get right. that kind of a look. Yeah. Okay. Well, right now the entire image uh, is sharpened, but if I don't want the sky, because sometimes you don't want the skies to be sharpened, uh, depending on the picture, um, you can then just paint in, or since I already have a mask over here, with that filter, you can actually bring it up. Hit OK. But now I want to invert it, so it should just be only here getting... Nope, the other way around. Invert. No, close. Okay, invert. There we go. So now it's just in here. That, so I brought the mask up here, and right now, as you're looking at it, only the thing in white, which is the buildings, will now have the high pass filter. So you can kind of see the difference like that. Just to make it sharper, yeah. And then they're done. If you still want to kind of tweak anywhere else, like in the, in the tones, then you can um, keep playing with it. Uh, it all depends on, everyone's different, everyone's eye is different on how they see things, how they, what they like, what they don't like. But right. I like to, with the black and white photography, I like to push 
the tones uh, as far as I can and get the different um, degree of um, white to black and the gray in the middle. Like I, I like things to pop and I try yeah. to push well, the gray tones as much as possible. Yeah, black and white is all about contrast, right? So exactly, exactly. So, uh, Julie, with COVID around and we're all just trying to, you know, find stuff to do, you came up with a project that you're pretty proud of, and I think it's called your Halloween co collection. So, I wonder if you share that with our audience. Uh, sure, Randy. So, I was uh, kind of thinking about all the photos that uh, I have saved and what I could do to um, put some of them to use by making a composites of, of images. And um, I was fortunate enough that uh, I had a lot of images from uh, the Toronto Zombie Walk back in 2014. And that same year, I went to Camp 30. Uh, I did some night shots at the cemeteries when I was doing the, the ghost uh, stuff for the scavenger hunt. So I had all these images. So I thought, let me try and, and put uh, some of these images together. Um, can you see the screen? I can. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So is it easier maybe if I kind of, no, I guess not. Uh, I was going to try and make get rid of all these menu things here. Here we go. So I spent uh, a few weeks of playing with this. Um, getting you know certain zombies that i had um uh, trying to put together just a fun halloween series so this one is my church uh scene um where i i had uh, one two three four five different sets of zombies uh so those are five pictures um the moon is another picture the church and the grave site there um is another picture um, and just kind of put them all together. The sky, I put the sky in to give it a more of a darker, mysterious sky, even though this was kind of at night when I shot this church. Uh, but I didn't like the sky. It was just a plain dark sky. So I spent some time kind of playing with this, trying to come up with something that would look fun and, you know, Halloween-ish. Yeah. So this is my graveyard uh, uh, site. Like this zombie here, I love him. The one with the dog. He's just, his face is just amazing. <laughs> the way he was standing there. Uh, so these were all taken. These zombies were taken downtown at City Hall. That was the uh, last year they had the zombie walk, wasn't it? It was. was. I got so lucky I made it for that last year. So uh, it was so much fun going down there. Um, Camp 30 was another spot that I hit. So this building was taking place in Camp 30. Um, do you know what I mean by Camp 30? Oh, gosh, yeah. Um, yeah I, I think in... a lot of photographers know Camp 30, right? Yeah. Well, and I live in Oshawa, so... Um, it used to be we could go in there and just, you know, whenever yeah. we want. Now they got security up the wing wang. So yeah, I know. It's can't too, get too bad. Anymore. So I've gone, I was fortunate enough. I went there twice while you were still allowed. So once was during the summer. Uh, I think this was the summertime. And then I went once in the winter. My first time was in the winter. So I had uh, a lot of fun with this. Um, so I, I was going through my pictures, trying to see, you know, what rooms would look, you know, to try to, you know, make these zombies fit in and I was struggling quite a bit because you got to work with the color tone of the zombie to make it match the color tone of the of the background and um, so I, I did spend a lot of hours putting these um, images together here's another one from Camp 30 um, and just looking at the pictures looking at the zombies what would work what wouldn't work um, and just yeah just try to have some fun with them uh, I love this one. This one here this is, is the kitchen. I think this was like the uh, ca the the cafeteria. The cafeteria, yeah. Yeah, yeah. This was a great building. Um, <laughs> well, yeah. were these zombies that you you have here? Were they sitting down? I take it they on were. a park bench or something, right? They were. They were on a park bench. Uh, so these are two different layers because I had to make her higher. Uh, right. You guys, and this no, actually, I did. Sorry, I had to do them in three different layers, so one at a time because the coloring, they all had different tones in their, in their fabrics to try and to match the actual room. Right. So I, it was a lot, so I did them one at a time, but they were sitting on a bench. Okay. Um, these guys, this was done at the Scarborough Gilwood Park. Yes, um, I know that park, yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, again, going through some of those um, images, trying to find one that might work. So this was the, the bride and the groom. Oh, it's perfect. I, it's just perfect. I love, <laughs> uh, and just enough red to make me uh, get excited. <laughs> yeah, I really try to tone down the background and just, uh, and 
because it was broad daylight when I shot this. So you try not to make it look so light out, right? And uh, so that was a little, so I, I used one of the guild wood. Um, then the other ones, the last two, I just did these um, when I went shooting the mill, mills out in the East End. This was in Keene, Ontario. And I stopped at this one church. It was already about 4.30 in the afternoon. Um, so it wasn't very bright as bright uh, because the clouds were setting in. The sky is put in, so that's not the original sky. Um, but we were, I walked to the back of the church and uh, to try to get, again, trying to find the right scene to kind of fit these guys in. Uh, I thought I needed a church scene for, the, for these two. <laughs> and um, so that was what I came up for them. And then the same, same church, and this guy, again, was sitting on a bench. So I put the bench in the cemetery, because I think there was a ledge there, but it wasn't really big enough. He kind of looked like he was floating. So then I, um, and it, I, I put that bench in and then put him on top of the bench. And uh, well, That's a good choice. There. And the tone is what, like, it's still got, like, a bit of a foggy feel to it. Yeah. It's got a lot of mood. Uh, the colors mute it, but it's there. Um, I think I think you did a great job on these. Thanks. Yeah, they were just again. It was just for fun. Like I, I just wanted to have some fun with some Halloween stuff, and I thought, why not? You know, you try. I think going through your past images and kind of create things is something to do. On on when now that, especially now that it falls over and you've got nothing really to shoot, it, it kind of gives you something to do. Right. Yeah. Okay, why don't you stop sharing now so that I can okay. get the both of us on here. Perfect. All right. Okay. So, uh, Julie, have you ever heard of anybody named Glenn Dewis? Yes. So, so you know about his projects and his uh, love of the, um, the war veterans and stuff like that. So, we just, we just saw a seminar with him, and it was all about creating a project for yourself to give you, like, to get your creative juices going. Mm -hmm. So you're fantastic with Photoshop, uh, Glenn. I, I followed a lot of his tutorials. Yeah, he is quite great. But to be honest, I mean, you've you've created a project which was really his point was to you know get yourself a project of go back through. We all have catalogs of you know tens of thousands of photos. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and try to make something out of them. So, um, okay. Well, you know what? I think we're at the end here, Julie. I mean, that went fast, didn't it? It did. Yeah. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. I like doing this and I like uh, exposing great artists like yourself to other Thank photographers, you know, um, and local. Like we're kind of in the GTA. So this is great. There are a lot of great photographers in this area. I, I was fortunate through the Google Plus platform to meet uh, and get to know a lot of them um, and, and going out on photo walks with them back. Uh, so, but this was going back five, six years ago. So it's it's amazing how much um, really good photographers we have all around us. They're, they're, yeah, that's the one thing about being a photographer. Like, you know, the minute you think you're great, there's always somebody to show you you're not. And yeah. I, I love how humble this sort of thing makes you, you know. Like I can tell oh, yeah. you the first time I joined a camera club, I thought, ah, you know, I've got great stuff. But you know what? It took me about an hour to figure out that I wasn't even close. So yeah, uh, when I first joined the Richmond Hill Camera Club, I, I went in there confident. And then yeah, exactly. Then the, I, right away, it's just like, oh geez, I got a lot of lot of learning to do here to compete. And so, to be yeah. honest, Julie, I mean, uh, we don't get to go to some of the places that some of these really high end photographers go yeah. to. So when we can make lemonade out of lemons just by walking around our neighborhoods or something, I, I find that's those are the people that really have jam going on. It's people yeah, exactly. can, you know, you, you're not in like South Africa shooting some lions and stuff. You're, you're down the street trying to get some lines out of a building. Right. I love right. that. Yeah. And every town really has something. You just got to go out and explore them. I agree. There's always something you can shoot. So where can people find your work or contact you or any of those good things? Um, I, I my day to day, shots i usually put them up on instagram so at jewel bro photography i think my username is or julie broke if you if you search i think i can really broke it will show up uh so that's where i really put my day-to-day -day pictures i also have a, a website juliebroca.com um i try to put more just my what i think of my better images uh on there um and then whatever services i have so it's all there my contact info is all on there excellent 
Well, I'm going to leave our audience with a sampling of some of your other work. Uh, okay. I really want to thank you for joining us, Julie. I mean, uh, it, it was special for, for me to see your black and white work because I've been following you for quite a while now and to actually talk and get to know you. I mean, that's really why I'm doing this is just to get to know more people. And uh, I'm really glad you came on with us. Oh, so am I. This was a lot of fun. And I'm glad you're doing this podcast. It's great. And I look forward to hearing uh, all the other episodes. All right. Well, listen, you have a great day. And uh, thanks again for joining us. Oh, my pleasure. Okay. Thank you.